Darkcast Network, out of the shadows of the best of indie podcasts. Welcome to the J Squared Horror Podcast, where two lifelong horror fans talk all things horror. Pour yourself your favorite drink and hang out. Here are your hosts, Josh and Jake. Hey guys, welcome to the J Squared Horror Podcast. I'm Josh. And I'm Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sniffled during the intro, man. <laughs> My bad, guys. Um, well, yeah, welcome to the J Squared Horror Podcast. Uh, on today's exciting episode, what are we going to be discussing? We are covering 2004's Saw, directed by James Wan. Ooh, bringing in the Saw franchise yeah. in preparation for the new one that we're going to go see this weekend, right? Yeah. That's exciting. I'm excited to go see a movie with you again. It's been a while. It has been a while. I'm kind of excited to see I mean, there, hasn't, there hasn't anything really good to see. <clears throat> no, there hasn't been too yeah. much for us to go spend $40 on going to sit in a hot-ass movie theater for. <laughs> Very true. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Welcome to the J-Sport Horror Podcast. <laughs> again? <laughs> I just, it's like intros in the new spot. Just just leave my yeah. brain. <laughs> we, we consider ourselves the most original horror podcast out there because we are not information-based at all. We are communication-based. Yep. We like to get together once a week, drink and talk all things horror. We do not typically just give you information or like uh, plots or like budgets or like information on actors and actresses. There's plenty of platforms out there that you can find that. What we do is we just talk about all things horror, and we like including our fans in that. Jake, where can our fans find us if they're new to the podcast? As always, like and subscribe on YouTube. Pretty, 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 please. You can also find us on Spotify. We're on there. We're on Apple. We are. I guess now still on Google. Still, for the time being, before they close <laughs> it down, we are still available on Google. Also, Instagram, <laughs> J Squared Horror Podcast. Link in the bio, new episodes. Every Thursday. Every single Thursday, we get together and we talk all things horror. That was a good tight snap. That Very was good. tight. That same was arms yeah. right there in the yeah, camera. Good. good snap. For all of our audio listeners, you heard the beautiful snap. For all of our visuals, you saw that You happen. saw it happen. You, you saw, saw that. that shit happen. You saw that. Uh, with this being the most original horror podcast and a communication-based podcast, if you go to www.jsquaredhorrorpodcast.com, you can... Find our website where you can easily talk to us and put in episode recommendations. Let us know how you feel. Yep. If you're not into the social media thing, you can find all of our episodes and links on there. You do not have to go through social media if you do not want to. What I would also like to do is give a big, 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 big shout out to the Darkcast Network. As you hear in our intro every single week, we are part of the Darkcast Network. They are about all things strange and spooky and dark. They are a more true crime based podcast network but they welcomed us in which is super cool of them so if you guys like true crime which we know all of you do go check them out there's a plethora of shows on there that do some really cool stuff there was one i just listened to recently called like uh what was it? Hold on. it was actually kind of fun i guess they hit us up on instagram and they wanted to check out a couple of our episodes so i checked one of theirs Ooh, out nice yeah they were a lot of fun but their name was because it reminded me of us conspiring to argue podcast. So that's their whole, <laughs> yeah, they like, they pick a, a theme or a, uh, you know, like uh, conspiracy theory. Uh -huh. They talk about it and then they just argue back and forth. Okay. Two homies. So they're a lot of fun. Check them out. Give them some support and also check out everybody else on the Darkcast network. I cannot talk or say all the names of all the podcasts on that platform, but they're a lot of fun and they've been super welcoming to your boys. Um, that's all I got for. My intro. This is our first podcast episode of October. Yes. Welcome to the spooky season. We're, yeah. we're raining it in with Saul. Um, obviously, with the new one that just came just came out, right, last week? This yeah. Week? What's cool is October of 2004 is when this movie came out. Oh, obviously, that's people crazy. know Saul is coming out towards Halloween. Towards, yeah. 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 That is super cool. It's also the first time that it's just me and him in the new studio. I know. Which is exciting. Yeah. It's so cool. It's a little it echoey, is. but I like it anyway. Yeah, I yeah. like it too. I'll figure that out eventually once I figure out how feel, to do feel it. Feel real comfortable in here. Yeah, it is yeah. comfortable. A little hot. 
If you ask me, I wish the AC would be pumping a little more, but I'm okay. in control of that. <laughs> 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 Got to keep that electricity bill down. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, as you guys heard last week, I just recently moved and got a two-bedroom place, and I'm all excited about yeah. it because we got to do up a studio. We still got some stuff we want to do in here, but for right now, this is perfect. We got our lawn chairs, we got our beers, we got our table, we got our equipment, and we're going to bring you some yeah, fun, entertaining entertainment on Saw. All right, so Saw is the first of its kind, in my opinion. I mean, there's probably been other ones. It's the first to really start this whole... Uh, like, uh, was it, was it, was it, what kind of torture porn? That is it. Yeah. Torture porn, as I didn't like us saying when we first started, but here we are. And I'm now saying <laughs> <laughs> it kind of, um, it kind of really brought that into the mainstream. I'm sure there's been other ones that might be I'm more sure, yeah. smaller, yeah. low budgeted, but as far as a massive movie production, this was probably the first and biggest one, especially in 2004. And it's so crazy. We talked about it a little earlier outside but <clears throat> watching it now yeah in 2023 yeah eh. yeah also like it, it doesn't <laughs> push many buttons doesn't Emerald doesn't, doesn't push as many buttons especially the first saw um but yeah. also we're you know you got to think about it we were in middle school <laughs> it's almost <laughs> this, 20 years ago yeah, 20 almost 20 years ago when this movie came out Holy we're both shit. in our 30s so we were preteen, like teenagers yeah. at that time so it's crazy that we Obviously, with like the Halloweens and stuff like that, like obviously they've been around for a while. But a movie like this is one that stuck out to especially our age group yeah, when it came out, for sure. especially yeah. our generation of, of horror connoisseurs and people that were kind of getting into it and finding movies that were for them and trying to hide this kind of movie from their parents or whoever they live yeah. with. You know, you finally got to watch it with your friends on a Friday night, you know, when you got it from Blockbuster and you're all excited. <laughs> and it's like, it's crazy because, like you said, now in 2023, you're sitting here like, hmm. Okay. I was a little bitch back then. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> this movie doesn't make me uncomfortable at all. And it, it is what it is. It's not a bad movie. By any means, no. But it just doesn't have that same wow factor that you would expect from Saul. And obviously, they've made 474 more Saul's. So, yeah. it, with a new one on the way. It's so. so interesting to me that this is a movie that spawned all those other movies. Yeah. Because... I mean, we covered when, one last when week. When you want some, you're like, how the fuck did you get this from that? Yeah. <laughs> but they did. They did. And then, like I was saying, you know, to you earlier, but, uh, you know, we try not to talk too much about the movie before we get on the mic, but sometimes genuine conversation happens between two best friends. And I, I feel like, you know, for me, like, I loved Saul when it first came out. I appreciated what it did. It was I really did fun to watch with my friends. And it yeah. was really fun to, like, flex on the girls and be like yeah i watched it and i wasn't even scared <laughs> you want to watch it with me next friday when i can get it from blockbuster uh because it'll be 99 cents next week it's new this week it's still 3.99 <laughs> <laughs> it's in the new section i gotta wait for it to just hit horror <laughs> but yeah then like you know i'm i'm thinking like as who i am as a horror fan now it's like i prefer like terrifier as like a gore fest type horror movie because i like the killer being a killer and like doing his thing versus as they mention in this saw, he doesn't technically kill anybody. He's just an old dude with cancer. So I've never been a big gore fan. Yeah. I don't feel like it's necessary in horror movies, but depending on my mood, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> but the terrifying movies, they do it so well. They're like a perfect, they're like a perfect blend of like slasher and gore fest. Which, like, for you, I'm surprised you said that because, like, Friday the 13th has always been known as the more gory or slasher. Like, Which I'm very surprised how, because there's not a lot of gore in those movies. I mean, in comparison to, well, like, I guess Halloween. A, maybe 80s. Copied. 80s go- <laughs> <laughs> we did it and did it better. No, not a chance. You didn't do it better. But, but um, we were talking about how, how technically he didn't kill people. It made me think of Dr. Uh, Kevorkian. Who in the nineties um, set up like those death machines for people to like well, you know like self assist in ending their lives, hmm. and his whole thing was technically I didn't do it. So this is now we're a true crime podcast. 
We're not a true crime <laughs> pod. I mean, we're, you know, yeah, dark, you dark know. cast. Yeah, Come on, dark. now. <laughs> Make us your number one horror slash yeah. true crime podcast. Yeah, horror slash true crime podcast. Uh, I've never heard of Dr. Kevorkian. Yeah, his name was Dr. Death. Oh, now that sounds familiar. That probably sounds yeah. more familiar than that. Than Kevorkian. <laughs> yeah. So that's, I mean, that's cool. Yeah, probably a dated reference, but whatever, guys. We're a little it. older. It's cool. Yeah, that's like we were growing up. Yeah. yeah. It was in the 90s? Yeah. That's relevant. We're allowed to talk about the 90s. And there was a movie with Al Pacino in it where he played Dr. Kevorkian. Mm, I said, you you just stick with Dr. Death over there, bub. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Death. Dr. Death. You know, and it's... it's One thing that I thought while I was watching this movie, and uh, for all of you that are new to the podcast, buckle in, because this is not going to be like anything you've ever heard <laughs> before. That's okay. why we can say... We call ourselves original when truly we're just us. <laughs> but... I was thinking, like, do you think that, like, so our generation, you know, we're, let's see, 20-ish years ago. So, yeah, we're like 12, 13-year-olds, yeah, you know? Yeah. pre predestined Maybe you hit puberty a little young. You know, you're figuring out what you like, what you don't like. Like I said, you're trying to be cool in front of the cool girls. Try to make, like, I saw, saw. Since Saul, right, 2004, now there's, like, escape rooms and, like, all these other crazy. Do you think that, like, played a part into, like, the society of like people wanting as close to that as they can get. Yeah. Cause I feel like we, made, that's like an actual, like people actually pay money to be in yeah. like crazy situations. Yeah. Which I think is insane. Even just like normal escape. We don't got to go like horror. Yeah, just normal, just yeah. normal yeah. escape it, yeah. rooms. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Well, we did mention, or well, I mentioned, I think we both, I mentioned at least, or maybe you did about Saul being influential. I was talking to myself for a moment, guys. It's okay. Uh, it's okay. About Saul <laughs> being. like, what's happening? <laughs> Who said what? what when? Influential. <laughs> I think you said, but I said, but you said, but then I said. For the 2000s. <laughs> I think it has, ex- it has influenced other movies and other things in society, at least. To me, at least. No, I fully agree with you. That's why you said and I said. <laughs> that, <laughs> in short we said <laughs> uh that it you know it might not be the best of horror movies but it's damn gotta be in the 2000s one of if not the most influential horror films that came out i agree it's unfortunate though watching it now yeah. how visually Dated. it does not hold up it doesn't and it's, you know, it's crazy, though, because we love movies from the you know, late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. And it's almost like you, you're you like, um, you can get away with certain things, but it still doesn't look as dated as a movie that came out. Which is weird. 19 years ago. And you can't even say budget because, you know, my favorite horror film of all time is like one of the lower budgeted ones. So it's like, you know, what do you, what, what, why? I think it's because of, you know. Um, maybe where they chose to spend their money yeah, I versus feel like, other areas of the movie. Yeah, I also feel like, um, I guess, what, the setting yeah, in certain scenes? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's what, to me, looks the most dated. And the weird transitions they use. Oh, yeah, it was definitely like, uh, what was I think? Just like even like the MTV commercials that used to come on before movies. Like, yeah. it gave me that vibe. But yeah, it was like like when they're driving, like when they're chasing each other in the uh, cars. I'm like, oh my god! The whole like, like it's super like, super like, fast cuts, and you can tell they're just in a car, just turning. It's the just wheel. green screened, and yeah. they're just like it's got like the Gran Turismo music going on in the background, just like uh, like like well, it's like an off budget uh, Fast and the Furious happening for a yeah, second. It, it doesn't look good. No, not all of it. If I, you know, and I think that like even if it's like you consider the makeup, like when uh, the doctor starts getting like real pale uh, towards the end, it just looks like you put on white makeup from like Party City, just like a Halloween costume. Yeah, it's literally Party City makeup. But you know, I'm not a makeup designer by any stretch of the imagination. But there's also like really cool parts of it, and it's like the the torture traps or like that stuff all looked really good. It withstood the test of time. The reverse bear trap puts fear in all sorts of people and just the idea of your your head getting ripped off like that yeah and then you have the razor blade scene and it's like well speaking of which we're talking about all the traps do you have a favorite trap from this movie yeah um yeah i do um 
Uh, like the scariest one is for sure the reverse bear trap. Okay. But I think the mental torture, I don't even know if it's considered a trap, but when he's in the closet and then like the little girl was saying the whole time that somebody was in the closet and they're like, no, you're fine. And then he comes out. And for some reason, the fact that he's covered in like a sheet or like a, a blind, like it, as a kid. It's so like abrupt. Yeah. And it's something you don't expect. No, anything. I didn't expect yeah. that at all. So, I I mean, I, I guess trap wise, I have to go reverse bear trap. But like the, the part of somebody being a, a part of a trap, quote unquote, or a plan. Yeah. That part was really cool because it was the most realistic, but also like it would freak me out the most. And it did kind of make me super uncomfortable because like, as you guys know from being fans of the podcast, if you have been like window scenes and like blankets and body bags and shit like that, for some reason it fucked me up for my entire life watching horror. So it was, it was like, I wasn't expect, and I've seen it and I completely forgot that that scene even existed. I forgot that his family was even tortured a- at all in this movie. Oh, yeah. I, I, there's parts of this movie that I just completely forgot about that being one of them. But I feel like that, in order to get him to do what he has to do, or to try to get him to do what he has to do, was like was super. That was like actually one of the better storylines of Saul. Okay. How about you? What's your favorite trap? My favorite is. I think I'd probably also say the reverse spear trap. This movie because is, there's not many. It's so one is so iconic. It's the yeah I see it at every horror. It's convention like we go the to. definitive Saw trap. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> But also, it seems like it's the number one that if you do not complete it, it'll be the worst death. No, it's the best death. The razor blade well, crawling it, is the worst. I feel like worse. Physically. You think so? No, for sure. You're not going to feel that. It's almost instant Well, death. actually, in that case, so the dude who is in the room with the numbers all over the wall, and he's smothered. Oh, he's smothered in, like, kerosene or something. And the they broken also, glass yeah, on the floor. They also didn't that, explain that enough. I was very irritated all, about that. Yeah, but at all. That is a trap you can't get out of. There's no winning that trap, because yeah. he's, like, lighting the candle in order to see, I do believe, and then he catches yeah. on fire. That one's the worst. All right, we just forgot. But, like, physically speaking, that one's the worst. I mean, razor blade's pretty bad. But burning alive? Oof. Yeah. But the the reverse bear trap, I feel like it would be instant death because like oh, yeah. when it disintegrates that mannequin head, if that's your face, you're, you're not feeling. I mean, I don't know how many like people are like when you get decapitated, you're still alive for point three milliseconds. I don't fucking know. I'm not. I've never yeah. been decapitated or like <laughs> injured to that extent. So it's like I feel like it would be the quickest. So like if I was in the reverse bear trap, I'm just gonna be like, eh, fuck it. Also, who's the person that I have to cut open? You know, am I going to go ham? Am I going to try to survive? Also, the fact that he said they were dead. Yeah. Is it, is it carcass? Yeah, that's a little fucked up. And he's like, oh, and you're like, well, I already stabbed you, bud. Yeah. Well, My bad. We're doing it now. Yeah, we're in here like swimwear, bub. <laughs> is that the trap you think you could get out of? Yeah. Yeah. If Exact same scenario? Yeah. I can't, I can't, I, there's, none of the other ones are completable, which I guess we find out later throughout the Saw franchise why that is, because she ends up being a part of it. Like, I think she was meant to survive, because he probably knew that it would draw her in, him, her in to him. Mm-hmm. But all, none of the other ones, like, the idea that he's never killed anybody is far-fetched, because he put the device on the person, or made them do that thing. Because they're going to die one way or another. Most of them choose the survival rate, which is them choosing to do the thing that gets them killed. But if they stay there, they're still going to die via poison or something else. There's yeah. always a caveat to his plan. I agree, yeah. You're going to die. Do you want to die quickly or do you want to sit around and wait for death? That's the ultimate question of all Saul movies. Do you want to try to survive in an excruciatingly painful way or just wait to fucking die? What? Well- the one thing I don't <laughs> that's, like... That's like that's the most fucked up, like... I don't like the fact that they're timed. Which just adds a whole nother level of stress, especially in the yeah. reverse bear trap one. Because A, you have the fear of your face getting absolutely ripped open. But also, like, you have to cut, cut somebody open and find a key inside of their body yeah. within a minute or however long it was. I don't feel like I'm that accurate. Or I don't think... I Honestly, the part that would probably fuck me up the most is the smell and the feel. Of like, like in this scene where she's like holding intestines, I, you know, that part would probably get me. 
Yeah, that's a lot. I don't think it's the actual like killing of something. Well, that sounds fucked up, but I'm just gonna say it. it's not the actual act I of feel killing like it would somebody. Depend on, depend on the. If person. I don't know the person, it is what it is, well, bro. She knew that person. Oh, who was it? Her ex boyfriend. Oh, pff. yeah, we've already mentioned this on an episode before, bro. Line them all up. Every ex I've ever had, you're just getting slaughtered. So if it's a complete stranger, even easier. Okay. I don't know you from Joe Blow. Sorry, you're in the game too. We're both in the game. You don't know me, I don't know well, you. Who's they're winning? They're mano y mano. Really a part of the game. There's just like everybody's a part of the game. Want to play a game? No, I'm good, Jig. Thank you. Appreciate your time, but I'm just gonna ride this one out. I ain't gonna give you. <laughs> I ain't getting your jollies off. Mm-mm. Also, it's like everybody that like you see is like a part of it, right? So even the guy that was like you thought was like with him wasn't. He was also being jigsawed. <laughs> you know the creepy white dude that that attacked the family? Zep. Zep. That's his name. Yeah. Also, like, and then you get into like the whole main part of Saul is the the bath the the bathroom or whatever that is, which to me is such bullshit. Because if you remember, <laughs> if you remember the key went down the drain. It went down the drain. Nobody's surviving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless you chopped your foot off. I think there's another way out. Whoa! What's your idea on the other way out? Just so break the chain somehow. You can't. Why not? Have you ever seen a metal chain? Has a chain never been broken in the history of chains? Not by a human. Not that thick, no. You haven't, you're not going anywhere. You don't have the strength. Those chains are used to like, like there are, there are levels of chains, Jake, and there are levels of metal. You you may not have the strength, but you have the time. You don't. Yeah, you do. It it was time. Were were, were they timed too? (laughs) Yes. Time. They were timed. Because remember, you said you're too oh, late. Oh, yeah, because they got mm-hmm. the, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. breathing the shit in. Breathing the shit in. The thing is, bud, time doesn't always equal success, okay? If I, I'm not breaking my fucking it, foot or I, sawing it off or listen, any of that shit. you're going to die then. That's I'm not saying that that's not an okay plan, bud. But the fact that you think like a six-inch... Those old rusty ass chains. Doesn't matter. Did you see the pipes that they were wrapped around? They were like fucking 10 inch diameter cast iron pipes. You can break it. No, you can't. With enough time. No, time can't. doesn't equal strength. You'd have. You're slowly chipping at it. No, no. You're not making. I'm, you're talking about thousands and thousands of years. Thousands of years. Even with a constant stream of water, which as we all know, because water carves through like the earth, still, bro. Like you're you you just you have like a weird concept of like of like what somebody's capable of. And like Because you know what, guys? You're capable of anything. You're not. You are. You can't fly. Jump off the top of a building. Just give it time. Your wings will grow as you're falling to your fucking death. No, Jake. That's not that's not how this shit works. That chain and that pipe. With the proper equipment. No. Yes. Proper. You get a, a fucking torch. Yeah. You're out of there in a couple hours. Okay. You don't have a torch, bud. Take that saw. The saw is dull. It's a bone saw. Go at it for a couple weeks. The blade's now a piece of flat metal that's just causing friction. Keep chipping at that pipe. With Yeah. Okay. Have you... D- <sighs> You've... Ha- have Any, you ever like anything is seen it or like touched it? Like anything that's like in this movie? Like right. a cast iron pipe like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. They're still like those things are at the bottom of the fucking ocean on the Titanic and they're still intact. That was hundred years ago. But if you go at it for one hundred years ago with ocean attacking it with currents and, and nah, fucking salt. I have to disagree. You can't. It's I facts. Just did. You can't. Th- but I that's disagree. one of the instances where, like, science and facts will just completely destroy your theory of surviving this Saul predicament. That's so just like, do you think you can lift a car? Adrenaline gets you a little bit of strength for a little okay. bit of time. Okay. Okay. A little bit of strength for a little bit of time. A little bit of adrenaline each day for two weeks, you're good. You don't get random bursts of adrenaline because your body gets exhausted. You have no fuel. I mean, you know. That's how the human body works. I'm not a fucking doctor. You're not a robot either. 
You're thinking you're the fucking T-1000 over here. I feel like anything is possible if you put your mind to it. It's one. not. Yeah, it is. It's literally not. It is. Like a goal? Sure. Maybe. The goal is survival. Yeah. Yeah, but you're going to die. You'll survive for a little bit. So the I only, mean, literally, your, your so theory the, the is only, that The only can, way out to saw through your fucking foot? Or just die. Yes. That's it. You, That's why it's a game. It's a winless game. You would saw through your foot. I don't think I could. You would just die there. Yeah, so we've talked Does about that this. I do effort. not have the will to live. I'd give it a couple runs with the saw because I would think oh, for well, a half well, a well, second. Well, the saw doesn't work. It doesn't work, but it'll at least tickle my brain that I tried. And I people will know because they'll see the saw in my hand while I'm dead. That I tried, you know, I did. I did give it a valiant effort. I'm getting out of there. They've I been not drugged. My foot they've off. been poisoned. They've they're dealing with stressors of life and decisions. It's it's a winless game. That's the whole point of Saul. There is no winning. This guy has thought about how to torture and kill people for a while. So you think the point of all those games is to not win? Yes, that is literally the whole point. No. Do you do you, do you are you just are you just trolling right now? The point of this one particular movie is not to not win the games. Yeah. Like you just said, like I'm going to use your own theory against you. Okay. When it started, the key went down the drain, which was their only way out. That was it. The rest of it's just to get them excited to maybe hope that they can get out. Nothing else is getting you out unless you saw your foot off. But that does mean the game is still able to be won. No, because you freak out and you jump out of the water because you're drowning. That's a survival instinct. You can't turn that off. You're not thinking, I'm in this uh, bathtub with a key. No, you're thinking, holy fuck, I'm in a bathtub. Let me get out of here. When you jump out, you take the, the key goes down the drain because that's how water works. It, it, it goes. <laughs> it doesn't just sit there. Now, if you wouldn't have freaked out and you would have slowly gotten out of the tub and you would have kept a little plunger in there, you would have survived the game. But that's not the point. So what is crazy to me is, let's say he did do that. Yeah, the movie's the, like five the, minutes. The game's that easy? Yeah. What if it was some weird like that key didn't, like, didn't even work or something? It might not have because they, they found a key. They each had a key that they tossed back and forth. Yeah. Th- it didn't th- work. There's no way that the key he was in the tub with no, I think so. Was the key to unlock both their... At least his. I don't know if it's both of them. You don't think he was trying to get Gordon out? No. I didn't like Gordon. Really? Is that the doctor guy? Yeah. He's a piece of shit. How so? What do you mean, how so? How so? He was he was cheating on his wife. He didn't do it. He, well, we don't know that. He, he went through the intent. But he didn't do it before. We all know that. I mean, she was ready to go. She was. She's young. She's a boy. Lying to his whatever. daughter. Like, that's bad. Parents lie to their kids all the time. Yeah, but like that kind of lie? Come on, bro. Also, what was the, what did the photographer do wrong? Why was he in this? Because he's a... Uh, he's a private investigator? Yeah, doing his job, I guess, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in theory, it's not the worst thing he could do. To do your job? No, that's actually pretty pretty admirable. Depends on what your job is. Yeah. But also, like, the Gordon, I just didn't like him. He was too white for me. I mean, I, <laughs> he just what? was. Yeah, he was way too white for me. And everything he wanted, nothing was wrong. He lived his life, was willing to risk. His wife was stunning, beautiful, seemed cool. Daughter was adorable. Big old house, doctor job, nice car. Fancy suit. But also, my question is, was he not wearing a belt? Don't you typically wear a belt with a suit? Yeah, you don't think they took the belt off? I mean, nobody else's clothes were missing anything. What do you mean? He, he could have made a way better tourniquet than a fucking shirt. That's what I'm getting at. Being a doctor. <laughs> I feel like that, you know, I might have to rewatch it and look for a belt. I feel but like he didn't have a belt on. They did take the shoes. That's fucked up, though. Yeah. That would get me right there. They took shoes, what, shoes, socks, belt? You take my shoes and my socks, kill me. Kill me. In that dirty fucking bathroom. Yeah. It's go through the poo-poo for no reason. Yeah. Like I should have checked the fucking tank first. Yeah. Yeah, that's where the that's where the marking was. Yeah. 
up here, not down not here. Down in the shit. Up here, <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> That's how you should have known. If one of them's not gonna make it, it's him. him. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. They neither one of them had good survival instincts. As a doctor, you should know that the bone saw is not gonna get through metal. Also, tie your shirt a little tighter. Make sure your tourniquet's good to go. And fuck crawling around trying to like get more answers. Just get the fuck up out of Dodge. You don't want answers? No, I don't want answers. I want to survive. Like if I'm if I've chopped my foot off, the searching for answers is over. I mean, yeah. At at that point. Yeah. yeah. When I get to the point of being like, all right, the foot's gotta go. Yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna be like, well, like why? Why'd you do this to me? (laughs) The whole movie has fucking explained why. You're not a good person. According to Mr. Jigsaw. I still don't think that I could saw my foot off. I don't either. I don't think I have the, the strength. I'm just been as, the much, tenacity. as much time as I can on them chains and the shackles. And You're not even going to make barely a scratch. I got nothing but time. <laughs> yeah, but you also have things going against you, like friction and strength of steel versus blade and... All sorts of other things. But hey, man, I love your positive mentality of thinking you're going to get through a a thick-ass chain with a barely a blade. I do. Or maybe can I? I'm thinking maybe my foot will get skinny enough that you can, like, break it and, like, disintegrate it almost. Yeah, me, I'll just break my foot yeah. and pull it through. Just, like, crumple all the bones. Yeah. and then just... That's the best way because you're not dealing with blood. You're just dealing with pain. Yeah. It's not going to kill you. It'll hurt like a motherfucker. You yeah. might pass out yeah, from shock yeah, for a little bit. You might pass out, yeah. yeah. But passing out doesn't kill you. Also, was the poison real? How do we know if any of this is real? We don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, minus the white faces. Because we, we were It was told, obviously hitting Gordon way worse than the other guy. We were told the guy in the center of the floor was dead. The whole time. Also, yeah. I would have been checking him from the jump. Why? Like once I got free, he's the first thing I'm going over to. Why well, are you here? Well, why? Why? Well, why, why, why is any of this You just said happening? once you're free, you're not asking why. You're just leaving. But he can't leave. Like he, he is still trapped in there. So he's searching. So what's the point? Of, he, he didn't leave. He crawled out, didn't he? Well, once the door got opened by the guy coming to kill him. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think originally when he cuts his foot off, he's just crawling around. What like else trying to know? talk to homeboy. What else would you do? I'm gonna check his body, the guy in the middle. That's it. That's I mean, like in that instance, like if all the doors are locked, and I sawed my foot off. Yeah. The only thing I'm I'm not looking for answers. I'm looking for a way out. So I'm gonna check that middle body because, like, how the fuck did you get in here? And also, didn't he get the gun too? Yeah. So you're chained in there with somebody else. Yeah. And I think if I remember correctly, it was in order to live, you have to just kill this other person. Easy. Would you do it? If I just had to kill that person to live? Yeah. Yeah. Because granted, yeah, Gordon didn't know who he was. Even then. Sorry, bud. I have a lot more going for me. So if it's someone that you knew, you still do it? No, not necessarily. It depends on who the person was. Okay. But as a police trainer, you do it no problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately. Then you're sawing your foot off. You got a lot going on. No, not if I had to saw my foot. If if you said I would just, if I just killed that person, I would live. I'm not going to come up with some magical plan. Like that cigarette, done, done and done. I'm dipping that shit in the blood. I'm tossing it over to you. You get your draw. You die. I go home. (laughs) That's true. Technically, you killed yourself. It's like the saw theory. I didn't technically kill you. You asked for this cigarette. I'm gonna toss it to you. But now the blood is poison, which it wasn't. So it wouldn't. I said now looking at you, it's just fucking just smoked the cigarette, and that one happened. He faked it. (laughs) Yeah, that was terrible. (laughs) The worst. I'm dying. But the anything. fact is, is it Jigsaw, who's laying in the middle of the floor, is the one that sets off those electrocutions. You see it later in the movie. Yeah. Nobody saw him move in that instant? I highly Plot doubt. Hole. I highly doubt. In that situation, you're watching the dead bodies. You think is dead in the middle of the floor. I'm not. Yeah, but wouldn't you see him move? Even if it's just a little. I guess you're distracted by the other guy and the lights turning on and off and the plan to survive. I did it. I killed him. And he shocks him. And he's like, oh, shit, this hurts. Speaking of which, I'm not sure if it's true or not, but I saw somewhere that Tobin Bell, the guy who plays Jake's Oh, okay. Really laid there the entire time. Yeah, but it was probably just for like scenes. 
But why though? <laughs> you why really wanted you, to be in character. Why are you actually there? <laughs> you just wanted to be in character. It looked real though. It looked good. Yeah, but that's something like a stunt double cut to that. Why are you doing it? He really wanted. He he's a, a method person actor who doesn't talk to the end of the movie. Method actor. No, he's lay, got a couple. Lay there the entire time. He's got a few lines. I mean, once he's there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like in those scenes. Yeah, in that scene. Why are you here? Also, the one other thing I hate about, and I hate one thing I question about this movie are the police. Just horror cop one hundred and one. Once again, back to back movies. Detectives are not that good. They're not that smart. Why are you questioning them? The timeline is very tricky. So, Donald Glover, Danny Glover, Danny Glover. Thank you. I know I was gonna fuck that up. Oh, Donald Glover. Glover. That's a uh, yeah, Charles, Charles Gambino. Gambino. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Danny. Good old Danny Glover. Um, he got his neck slit by. Yeah, that was pretty intense. Jigsaw. Yeah. But then had the scar. So it was like, it was like some, like this is, this is like m- months and months and months later. When was he chasing? I thought it was like the same day. No. Because you can tell, I'm sure that cut took him off the force immediately well yeah he should have been dead there's no way he survived yeah so that took him off the police force and you see from all his fucking newspapers and all his stuff so time maybe that's why gordon looks so white a lot of time has gone by months but there. that doesn't add up either because the, the mom and the daughter were kidnapped and they were perfectly fine but also he had the perfect little diagram of what was going on he had it planned out. So hold on. So he had when they're when they're searching that building, we're talking months, right? Because he has his his shit's healed when he goes after the guys. In in this yeah. So other scene. when we see them, he has the diagram. That's Jake's all plan of how it's going to go. But it looks just like him, right? Yeah. It hasn't happened yet. Either it hasn't <laughs> happened or it like just happened. He probably gave up the plans, get them, get them, put them here. We're good. He slices up Danny Glover's neck. Other dude gets killed by the little... Uh, Shotguns. Shotgun. Tripwire. Which I hate. It's super dumb to worry about. The fact that him tripping the wire gives him time to look up before... Yeah. Anyway. Time goes by enough for that shit to heal. I'm thinking at least six months? Gotta be for a scar like that. Yeah. Yeah. If not more, closer to a year. Over the course of six months to a year, and the two of them are still alive? Matt, you, you can't tell me that sawing a little piece for a year wouldn't get you out of there. No, it wouldn't. I'm telling you that right now. I don't now. believe it. Jake, I'm telling you that right now. I don't. How do you not believe it? It's simple what one thing can do to another. This isn't a diamond tip blade. This is a shitty saw that's used to cut branches and bones, that's not what, metal. That's a way to figure it out. No, there isn't. I think there is. There, it's There's no way physics, that Jake. he gave him those saws with the only way to get out is to cut your fucking foot off. Yes, Jake. How is no. that that complex of a thought? He's a fucked up individual. He doesn't want you to get out easily. There's always... He wants pain. As we see suffering. In, as we see in later movies... There's a way to get out of it outside of the obvious. Later, after he's figured out some shit, this is this is this is run one. The obvious way is to cut your foot off. No, the obvious way would be your way, chain. Because you don't have to hurt yourself. Well, according to you, you can't do that. So you can't I, do I, it. I guess it's not that obvious. But though. dumbasses will still obviously try to do I it for a period try. of time. I'm not cutting my foot off. Yeah, but you you're not going to cut through that chain. It's if impossible. I, if I've been here. In a place where there's no sense of time, obviously. Obviously not. And I Minus just, the clock that's ticking for six hours or whatever. Yeah, you don't, know, you don't know what day it is. Yeah, so it there. hasn't been months. There's a timer going. How long has it been? A couple hours. How did, what? Yeah. This all happened in an evening. No way. Yeah. No way he healed that fast. <laughs> that's one of the that's questions Im- I that's have. That's impossible. Here. 
I, that's what's confusing me about the whole cop chase scene shit. Like, it just doesn't add up in my head. Maybe they found his lair years before, but that doesn't make sense in the movie because yeah, that the, makes no sense. Yeah, yeah, but it just there that the Danny. That's probably why he didn't come back. He's like, this is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard or been a part of. That's a big plot hole there. Huge. And if anybody knows the answer to that, you know, obviously let Jake know that he, you can't saw through that chain no matter how much you I mean, try. No I thought I had years. a year. Well, I have an hour. So yeah, no matter how many years you try because the blade will go dull. That's how metal versus metal okay. v metal works. Other dude, toss me your saw. He broke his immediately. Okay, toss he me. fucking... <laughs> Also showed how cheap these fucking saws are. Yeah, well, he's a fucking idiot anyway. He is an idiot. Also, he deserved the way he went out, and that's to sit alone Why? and die. Why? Because he he had no good survival instincts, and I think you should die if you don't have survival instincts. Okay. Like your chain theory. Sorry, bud. I'm leaving you in there. You're not getting out. I'm getting out. How? Kill whoever else is there. If it came down to it, what I would do is I would just break my foot and slide it through. That yeah, that's the most logical way out. I don't know how I was just use this fucking pipe. I don't yeah, just kick it a bunch. I also don't know how loose do you think your foot gets? Like how squiggly do you think it gets? I need that shit loose enough to where it's flat. That's all I need. Yeah, but the heel, like what do you like? How do you? Or honestly, because I think uh, in other movies, someone takes the lid of the toilet and just bashes their yeah. ankle and pulls it through. I you know I immediately think of um, Doctor so, Phil and Shaquille O'Neal. When he saws the wrong foot off. Yeah. <laughs> the scary movies always have a special place in my heart. I mean, that's when you know you made it for us horror movies. Though. Yeah. Yeah. You made Especially it. Especially made in, a scary in that movie. time frame. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fucking Shaquille O'Neal and Dr. Phil. What a great combo. He can't make the fucking shots. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a way to make that movie lighthearted. The wife has the best survival instincts in this entire movie. She survives because she's a badass. And also, I love the fact that she really didn't seem like she cared about Gordon. At all. I don't blame her. She probably knew about the cheating. That didn't or, happen. Or the potential cheating, yeah. I think he did it and then was regretful. But I think he didn't do it. He was like, I got the fuck I'm out of here for a nah, mistake. Nah, he made the mistake. He's a shitty person. Also, if you only die for a maybe, come on. That's pretty fucked up. Well, he didn't die, so we're good. He did die. No, he didn't. Didn't everybody die? No, Gordon didn't die. He lived? Yeah. How do we know that? He's in another movie? Yeah. Oh. I don't remember many of the other ones, but... Also, it shows him crawling out and Jigsaw fighting him after he took his foot and put it against, like, a hot-ass pipe. The leg? Yeah. Oh. What's it called when you do that? Oh, cauterizing the wound? Yeah. Yeah. He just... Brings him He's like shaking. He's super That's white. Really good. Thank you. Really good. I like that. And then, um, yeah, he cleans him up and he becomes an apprentice. Oh, shit. Yeah. So if you survive Jigsaw, you just become a murderer. Yeah, because in later in the movie, I think like he's, like, I think it's part two where the guy has the key behind his eye. Yeah. Yeah, Gordon, who put the key in there. Oh, geez. Yeah. Oh, real surgical. Yeah. yeah. Which, when using that aspect, it makes sense in later movies. Yeah. Because Jason is not a surgeon or anything. Dying, too. Yeah. Not very strong. Yeah. <laughs> if there's any time for Danny Glover to say I'm too old for this shit, it's in this movie. Yeah, this was the time. This was the time. I was waiting for it. I really was. I was hoping. Like, when yeah. he got shot, he's I, like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm too I'm old for this shit. I'm a big Lethal Weapon fan. Huge Lethal Weapon so fan. So I needed some Murtaugh in there. Oh, yeah. But it didn't happen. I never knew how to say that. Yeah, Murtaugh. That was Murder Dog. Huh? The whole time. Okay. I did. Isn't that, uh, what's his name? Who? What's his name? Murder Dog? Yeah, what's the actor's name? Who's that? Isn't that, wait, is that his name? Who? Donald Glover. No, Danny Glover. Danny Glover. <laughs> yeah. Lieutenant Murtaugh. Oh, that's his name? What's, uh, what's his name's name? Mel Gibson? Yeah. What is his name? Fuck, I don't know. Riggs. Briggs, yes. Okay. Briggs and yeah. Murtaugh. The toilet, the toilet bomb is like yeah. the best. That'll if be he a, can survive toilet that'll bomb. That would be a good Halloween costume for us. 
Oh my god, dude! (laughs) Holy shit, that would be awesome. We so old, no one gets the reference, probably. No, it's 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 well known. Also, I dress as a Mel Gibson character, aren't I? Immediately, like a racist and like an anti-Semite. Yeah, probably shouldn't do that. But I'm not dressing as Mel Gibson. I'm dressing as Riggs. Yeah. And also, I'm pretty fucked up in the head like him. I feel like that's kind of our dynamic. Riggs and Myrtle. we never picked up on this? We should be Riggs and Myrtle. I Halloween. love Lethal Weapon. Oh, you well, do? we'd have to do it next year because I want to fucking not... Like my Captain Spaulding, how well I did, okay. I want to do the same thing. Okay. I don't have the time or money All for right. that shit this year. Oh, Jen would lose her mind. She loves that movie. Does she? Yeah, Jenny's a huge... We watch it all the time. I Yeah. Oh, nice. Big, big fan of those movies. I mean, the, there's like five of them. You know, the first couple are really. You ever watched the TV show? No, because it was um, a Wayne's brother. Yeah. No. Nah. It wasn't. You can't do that to me. It wasn't terrible. Oh, really? I, I enjoyed it, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was good. MTV? Fox. Oh. Fox has some good shows. Fox does have some good shows. They do. They actually do have some of the better, like, uh, mainstream shit. Yeah, now yeah. that I've started watching this 911 show. Dude, don't tell me you've been watching that. Yeah. We watch it on silent at the bar. I know. My dad's been telling me for the longest time to check out this show. I'm watching it At now. least Rookie. Rookie's at least good. Yeah, that's ABC, though. Oh, uh-huh, shit. Yeah. No, dude, 911 is trash. It's what? a soap opera with fire trucks. I mean, Nothing that they get into is very realistic at all. It's less realistic than Saul. <laughs> 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 like, what they go through on that show is, like, fucking insane. Some of that shit's insane. It's like Blue Bloods. Now, there's always like the biggest terrorist in the world going to New York yeah. every day. Just, <laughs> <laughs> whole city shuts down. 13,000 people die. But one of the Wahlberg brothers saves the day. Yeah. Who's and also, Tom Selleck. Who's also in a song movie. He is in song movies. A few of them, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's the detective. Good old Donnie. Good old Donnie. Uh, what was, um? Did were you shocked by the um, ending at all? No, were you? No. I knew the kid the kid was gonna die. I also thought this whole time that uh Gordon died, so that's my my B. Alright. Um also, um was Jigsaw wearing a bulletproof vest? I don't know. He got shot by a shotgun. Um and just fake fell it off. Um also then, then probably, he's yeah. so smart though. To know that if he fell that far away and took a shot that far away, that the guy would no longer be looking around for booby traps. Not that he was, but all cops and people should be looking for trip wires because that's something that gets people all the time. Uh, I've watched yeah. enough war movies. You shoot him that far, you see him fall, you're going to just walk towards him. You are. You're not going to be thinking about it. You're, you're like, holy fucking shit, I'm going to be in the newspapers this week. Um, I took down the jigsaw killer. <laughs> but you didn't. You got shot by five shotguns and a chance to look at them before he died. Um, also, it was kind of cool because they showed it. His fucking head was all blown off. Bad way to go out. But also, homeboy got sliced in the throat. And then a week later, no, an hour later, perfect little scar. Also had all the pictures and paintings and everything all yeah. around the house. Within also was conveniently across the street from Gordon's house. How did he know that? I guess because he was a person of interest. Okay. That that's part, okay, that part checks out. That part checks out. No, the timeline of this movie does not check out. Yeah. The fact <laughs> he's a person of interest, that checks out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all I was saying. That part checks out. Yeah, the one, the it one. Somehow ties his, his everyone. Pen. Yeah. It's like pen or something from his office was yeah. on the fat guy's body or yeah. something. All right. Well, we got through that eventually. Um, unconventional podcasting at its best. Like, it was fun, gentlemen. though. It was fun. On a scale from 1 to 10, what would you rate Saw from 2004? On a scale from 1 to 10, Saw, for me, is a 7. Jesus. Yeah, I know. I personally still enjoy the movie. Yes, I still enjoy the franchise. That's good. What about you? So all for me, after watching it, is a five five. Five point five. Five point five. All right. A little bit better than the middle. A little bit better than average because it was so influential, but it did not hold the test of time. So I have to drop it down. I'm sorry. I have to. It's the rules. Okay. I have rules to my ratings. I don't. No, you just you just close your eyes and a number pops up and you're like, fuck it, full time. It's just a feeling I have. I close my eyes. I got a feeling. Well, you know ooh, what? That Jake's, that ra- Jake's rating is going right. to be so bad. <laughs> you guys love it. Uh, next week, 
Uh, if everything goes to plan, we'll be covering Saw X. Saw X. Saw 10. It's like Fast and the Furious for horror movies. Um, Shit, it is. Yeah, it is. That, that's um, not a good sign, then. Yeah. 10. 10 Saws, and Jigsaw's back. The actor's back. They've already apologized for killing him. Uh, I, I'm actually excited about it, especially because we watched the first one. I hope it's good. Can't be any worse than Insidious Red Door. I mean, I hope not. Unless Tobin Bell is directing it, then it could be. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be fucking yeah, ironic? Oh my be. god, that would be crazy. That's why I brought him back to direct it. Yeah, be in it. yeah. No, that would be. Oh my god, that would suck so much, Monkey Dick. Yeah, see, I'll be in it uh, if I can if I can it. direct it because I know old Josh from Insidious got to do this. <laughs> I couldn't think of the, the actor's name. Direct director. Uh, yeah, that's, that's exciting. Um, we got some pretty cool stuff planned for the rest of October. Um, obviously the saws are the first couple of weeks, but then I think, I don't know if it's going to be the next one or the following one I'm really excited about. So guys, keep your uh, ears open. Keep following us on social media, Instagram, J squared horror podcast, www.j squared horror podcast.com. Let us know if you guys have any episodes you'd like to hear. I had a couple submissions, um, from, I know Caleb, Caleb Jones, who was on the podcast, he asked uh, for us to cover a movie, but I forgot. All right. Ooh. Well, I guess you guys submit it if we remember. We'll see. No, what we yeah, do. but when they submit it, you know, Caleb would just shock me with it. He was like, "You guys should watch it. Maybe cover it." It wasn't like an actual submission. It was like, "If you guys watch it." What, what movie was it? Mm-hmm. Okay. I can find it for you if you want. Nah, it's okay. I'm not that interested. You're not that interested. See, not you're the, the one. You're, you know, not, you're, not you're, you're the one. Moment. You're the one being a, a bully pants. You know. Never. Always. You also think you can saw through a fucking chain. Anything is possible. Not sawing through a chain. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, that's funny. Yeah, I can't find it. All right. See? Um, <laughs> now, if I did care, there you I would go. find it if you cared, but you made me feel uncomfy for do, not. Do you care? No, I, yeah, I did, but I don't anymore. Do you care? No, I'm conceding okay. to you. You both don't care. Sorry about that. No, we care. Okay, then find just, it. Just not find right it. currently. Well, find it. it. Maybe November. That's what okay? I meant. We, we care, got November coming but up. just not in the moment. In the moment. In this moment. Yeah. We care overall, though. Yeah, overall. Yeah, of course. Um, as always, big shout out to uh, our, our main supporters, who I haven't shouted out in like two episodes. <laughs> 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 when, you start, yeah, when you start, yeah, when you when you start getting too big for your bridge. No, it's the move and stuff, man. My brain hasn't been working right. Uh, big shout out to uh, Jeff Balance, who does our design work. Lucky Riggs, who does our intro and our outro music. Uh, we got some. Um, uh, we got an event coming up at the end of October uh, at Pale Horse Coffee in Great Bridge. We are going to be hosting a trivia day. Uh, over there and there's going to be some vendors there selling stuff it's going to be a lot of fun we'll both be up there and we're excited about that so yeah. thank you to pale horse coffee for inviting us out for that Woo-hoo. we haven't done a trivia in like a year so we got to shake the cobwebs off and do yeah. our thing we'll see how that goes uh you know if you guys are local please come out it'll be a lot of fun plus support small vendors and, and cool spooky halloween vibe stuff it's it'll always fun, a good yeah. time it's a couple days before halloween it's halloween weekend for sure I'm excited to actually have an event planned. We haven't been pushing or promoting that very much, so they reached out to us, and that's super cool of them. So big shout-out to you guys over there. Pale Horse Coffee. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this is the J Squared Horror Podcast. My name's Josh. And I'm Jake. You guys have a great week, and remember, it's hip to be squared. <laughs>